this is Joel Ramirez, Director of Medical School Tutoring at Med School Coach. Today, we're going to be talking about things that you can do right before your exam to maximize your exam day. So first of all, congratulations. You've worked so hard and you're almost to your exam day. It's hopefully just around the corner. So let's talk about some last minute things you can do. The things that I often get asked about is, what should I do the day before my exam? Should I review notes? Should I do note cards? So I should I do a bunch of questions? And my answer is always just relax. So you really want to spend the day before your exam relaxing, um, getting some sleep, getting some rest, and really preparing for your test day. So do something fun, go exercise, hang out with your friends or family, but take that day as a day of rest and prepare in, in preparation for your exam day, which will likely be a pretty challenging and long day. So let's talk about the actual exam day. How can you help yourself be, set yourself up for success in your exam day? The first and the most simplest thing is know where you're going to be taking your exam. So make sure you know where your testing center is at and how you're going to get there. And the other thing is make sure you leave a little early to get there. The last thing you want to be doing is rushing to your exam day. You show up all panicked and stressed out. So Google Maps, see how long it takes to get to your, your, your testing site. And then make sure you, you make a little bit of time to leave a little early so that you're ahead of schedule instead of having, running late. Some things can happen in the morning too, which might throw your schedule off. And you really want to give yourself a, a little bit of extra buffer to get to your testing center. We're going to talk about what to expect when you get to your testing center. So right now, the NBME is experimenting with different forms of testing centers. And what we talk about might not be exactly reflective of what your experience should be, but I will talk about what things will actually be like if you go to a, a pro-metric testing center. First of all, it's really important to read the instructions that they email to you ahead of time. In those instructions, they'll talk about several things you need to bring to your test day. They'll talk about a lot of their rules and regulations, and they'll also send you a testing permit. Make sure you print out your testing permit and bring it to you on the test day. You'll also want to make sure you have a form of valid ID. The Prometric testing sites will sometimes accept a digital testing permit, but print it out just in case. If you lose it, then you should be able to pull up your phone, which should be acceptable. But I think it's reasonable to print it out and have it with you just so you could be prepared. The first thing you're going to do when you get there is you're going to check in. So you're going to go to the front desk, and you are going to provide them with your testing permit and your ID. You'll be there with several other people taking exams, and they're not all taking US similar exams. So some will be taking the MCAT or uh, the GRE or the GMAT or other certifying exams. So you'll be with a, with a, a fairly heterogeneous group of people. When you get to the test date, once you check in, you show your ID, the next thing they'll do is they'll give you a lockup key. And they essentially provide you with a small locker to put your belongings in. It, they, you have to put all of your belongings in there, like wallets, watch, jewelry, and then your phone. And make sure your phone is turned off or on silent. And I always recommend our student, my students to just turn it off and keep it off throughout your exam. That way you're not like anxiously checking your phone on what answers you might have gotten right or might have gotten wrong in between your blocks. I think it's just a good idea just to turn it off, not let it distract you during the day, even on your breaks. I think it's very reasonable just to do that. You also can put your snacks in your locker. The next is what they actually provide you with. So they will provide you with some actual plug-in headphones for your computer. So uh, so it's like those earmuff headphones that you plug in the computer, and you want to make sure that those are working before you take your test for exam. And they actually do all the prompts on the screen and walk you through essentially uh, how to test your headphones. And the headphones are usually used for um, small videos like murmurs or other exam maneuvers. So you don't need them too often, but it is very possible that you might need them during your exam. The other thing that they give you is they give you like these noise canceling like earmuffs. They're very old, rubber, and uncomfortable sense of earmuffs that are supposed to block out sound, but they don't work very well. So for people who get distracted by noise, I always recommend that they actually bring their own earplugs. And so you can bring your own set of earplugs to the exam. Make sure you read Prometrics rules on earplugs, as they only allow certain forms of earplugs. I believe that they only allow for the foam earplugs and not the wax earplugs. So Read up on that and make sure you uh, figure out that you are using the same headphones that they will allow you to do. And you can bring your own headphones. It ends up working a lot better than using their old rubber earmuffs, essentially. They'll also give you two pages of essentially laminated scratch paper and a marker. 
And so you can use this to write notes throughout your exam or to write down your thoughts. Some students ask me, you know, there is a certain pathway that I find challenging to memorize. When I just start the exam, should I scribble the whole thing down there just so it's on there? And my general recommendation is not to do this. I think it's generally a waste of time and space. And you might not even see a question on that certain pathway. And so I just think it's not really worth it. If you run across a question, which you, it's a challenging pathway or something that's easier for you to draw out, then by all means, draw the whole thing out at that time. But I generally find that the laminate pieces of paper uh, are really most useful for equations and math, for things like biostatistics and things like that. Do your, your four by fours and um, write out your statistics questions. I find that to be the best use of a laminate paper, paper. And that's typically what I recommend that people do. Before you actually, actually enter your, before you actually enter the exam room, which is where your desk and all your materials will be, you have to essentially undergo like a, a pat down. So you'll get your finger scan, you'll sign in, and then they'll pull, pull, tell you to pull out all your pockets from your shirts and your jackets, and they'll make sure you, they look in all your pockets. They, if you're wearing glasses, they'll have to take, how do you take off the glasses, and they'll inspect them, they'll have you do a twirl, and then they'll do a metal detector. So usually kind of an uncomfortable process, but it doesn't take too long, and just be expecting it before you get started. And the second is, once you get going, you can take breaks whenever you want. If you take a break in between a block, it's considered an authorized break, and you can you just hit the button on the computer, follow the prompt, and go take your break. If you take it in the middle of the break, in the middle of a block, it's considered an unauthorized break. And similarly, you just click the button and leave. There are variable start times. So I know you signed up for exam to start at 8 a.m., but usually these testing centers will begin letting students in 30 minutes before the actual exam start time. And then they said, it's essentially a first come first serve. So if you show up late, you will be starting your test late. If the, your exam is scheduled for eight and they start, people start coming in at 7.30 and you show up at like eight, then it's likely that you won't actually start your exam until 8.30 or 8.45. So another reason to show up early, get, get to the front of the line, get started, get through your exam and move on through your day. Make sure you come prepared with your snacks. So, People all have a lot of questions about how to schedule their test day. So in the sense of you've got your exam, but how do you partition your blocks? What kind of food do you eat? How do you really set those up for your success? And I think the answer to this is very variable. It's really going to depend on you. There are a few recommendations that I do give to people, though. I think it's, it's most useful to bring a lot of snacks. Even if you bring a substantive meal, make sure you have a lot of snacks because it's a long really exhausting day and you want to make sure that if you are on a block, on a break and you're really hungry that you have some food with you that you can eat. Bring some water and if you're a coffee drinker, bring some coffee. The details of, of when you snack becomes very different depending on the, the person you are. So for me, I knew that if I have like large meals and I get like a really bad food coma. So I didn't eat like a large lunch or anything that I just had snacks the whole day. I'm also a big coffee drinker, and in the afternoon, I'll get really sleepy if I don't drink coffee. So I brought my coffee with me, and after my fourth block, I drank my coffee. So think about what your kind of dietary habits are, and then plan your schedule based around that. And the best way to do this is to practice. So take seven blocks of UWorld, write out a plan for your snacks and your coffee or whatever, and then try it and see how it goes. And if it works well for you, then keep doing it. If it doesn't work well, then you'll have a chance to adjust because you really want to make sure that you're not really hungry or really dehydrated during this day because it's a pretty long day. That gets to the next question that we get about how to schedule my test day is when should you take your breaks? And similar to our meals, this is going to be very variable depending on the person. And so I will tell you what I typically recommend students do. And then it's going to be really important that you try it out and you see what works for you. So what I find is that I think it makes sense to do either blocks of two at a time or take a break like every other block. The reason is I, you have to check in and check. Every time you take a break, you have to check out of the testing center, which means you can get, a, get your fingerprint, sign out, and you go do your thing. But every time you come back, you have to use your fingerprint, sign back in, and then you have to go through the whole security check in. So they'll have you pull out your pockets, they'll have you do a twirl, they'll look at your glasses, and they'll do a metal detector scan. 
And so this process can take anywhere to three to five minutes. And it can take even longer as a line. So if multiple people are taking breaks at the same time and you're in this line, it could take five to 10 minutes. And although it doesn't sound like a lot of time, if you have a 10 to 15 minute break, that ends up really cutting into your break and can be a little stressful. So I can tell you what I did and I can tell you what most, what I recommend most students do. So what I did is I decided to go two blocks, take a break, two blocks, take a break, and go block, break, block, break. And the reason I did this is I felt that I was freshest at the beginning of the day. And so it was really easy for me to focus on doing two blocks, take a quick break, run the restroom, grab some water, grab a quick snack, and then get back at it and try to take two more blocks. And then after that fourth block, then I took a, a, a longer break. That was like 20 or 30 minutes. I had some more food, I had some water, I had my coffee. And for me, that was like a very psychologically useful kind of strategy because by the time I finished my fourth block, I knew that I was mostly done with the exam. I had four, done four blocks and I only had three blocks left. And so for me, it was really psychologically much easier to do it that way. And then I would do a block, take a quick break, do a block, take a quick break, do a block, and then I was done. And so that worked really well for me. And it minimized the amount of time that you're having to check in and check out the breaks. If you're someone who has to pee often, or you know you're going to be wanting water every hour or wanting some snacks every hour, then it's reasonable to take a, block, a break after every block. But make sure that you're, you're taking quick breaks because take the time can add up and it can take a, a little bit of time to get back into the exam room. So you don't want to be rushed to get back into your exam room or run out of break time. And again, if you're finding this overwhelming, the best piece of advice is practice this. So again, practice, simulate your test day. Get, take seven blocks of your world, write down some schedule of breaks and some schedule of snacks that you think is going to work for you and try it and see how it works. And if it works, then you can use that for testing. And if it doesn't work, then you can adjust from there. So moving on to how to act when you're actually taking your tests, some tips that you can use to make yourself a, a better test taker. The first thing is relax, relax, relax. When you get there, you're going to be really anxious. It's going to big day preparing for it for a while. It's gonna be a very unnatural environment. The, it's gonna be kind of a little cold and you're not used to the computers and you're not used to being like patted down before you take your exam. So first thing you wanna do is take a moment, relax, take some deep breaths and focus on the exam. I think it's really useful to employ uh, practice, to employ meditation, square breathing or other relaxation techniques. So you can Google a few and you can try them out. And I think particularly at the beginning of the day, when you're really anxious before you've gotten started, it's really useful to practice those. So before you take your test, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and then get ready for the exam. And during the exam, there's a few things that you want to, to really practice doing is stay focused and stay positive. Staying focused is really challenging towards the end of the day. It's a long day and there's a lot of questions. And so it's really important that you train yourself to focus on, the, on, on each question as if it's the most important, important question you're going to do during the day. It's really easy to start clicking through or start getting burnt out on questions, but you really want to approach each question as if this is the most important question of the day. And the other is stay positive. These exams are really challenging. It can be really disheartening, even when you're taking the exam. You're going to see questions that you've never in your life seen before. You're going to see questions where you have no clue what the answer is, but it's really important that you stay positive. You do not need to get 100% to score well on this exam. So even on those really challenging questions, which are completely stumped by, choose your best answer and move on to the next question. And it's really important that you keep that positive attitude because you want to avoid getting yourself stuck in a rut or going down this downward negative spiral or feeling, or feeling like you know nothing. Again, you don't need to get 100% of questions right to do well in this exam. The next thing is, every time you approach a block, it is a new block. So the end of every block or before you start each block, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and focus on the next block. So you can have a really horrific block and then have an amazing block and the two are gonna balance each other out. So even if you just felt you got demolished on the last block, Really forget about it. It's done, it's over with. Put it at the back of your mind, take a deep breath and focus on the next block. And you wanna make each question and each block the absolute best that you can do. So 
even if it's, you don't feel like the exam is going your way, you really want to start each block and each question with a fresh perspective, and you're going to give it the best that you can. And all these are very important for you to, to have a really successful test day. And just like I keep hammering on, the most the easiest way to do this is to practice doing it. So when you're doing your U-world questions, when you're doing your, 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 your U-world blocks, Practice text these techniques. Focus on each question as if it's the most important question. And when you're doing multiple blocks in a row, forget about the last block and focus on the next block. So once you've taken your exam, what do you do next? So your scores will come out in about four to six weeks. So between test day and four to six weeks, you really will have absolutely no clue on how you did. Everyone leaves the test feeling horrible. Even if you did really well, end up scoring really well, you're probably going to feel like you just kind of by a truck. These are very tough exams. They're very long days. So don't dwell too much on how you felt on the actual test date. And instead, move on with your life. Move on to your third year clerkships or your sub-internships or whatever else you have going on in your life. Try not to dwell too much on the exam. And then you'll get your score in four to six weeks, and you can go from there. Good luck and take care.